<laughs> I wasn't kidding about the whole first sergeant thing. Uh, this panel is combined with uh, what was supposed to be our um, final our final panel, Back to Basics. But all of it is about how to get published in the Grantville Gazette. If you don't know what the Grantville Gazette is, you need to go to grantvillegazette.com and you can look at our online magazine, which is actually, I think we're in our, we're on volume 37. We pay you five cents a word for your stories. They do have to conform to canon in Eric Flint's 1632 universe. The way to make sure that happens is to post your story on Bain's Bar in 1632 slush and then start a comment, comment thread in 1632 slush comments and let us pick it apart and tell you how to get it right to go on with, it has to conform with all of the five million words that have already been written. Which isn't as hard as you would think. No, oh. it is not. Your basic thing is avoid high politics. You don't get to kill any of the kings or queens. Eric does Or that. named characters. You can't kill or, them. Or named characters. And there's also a thing called yes, the grid. You can kill that named characters. Right they've never been mentioned in canon before. Yeah. Well, they're not named in canon. If you want to write an uptime, that is a grid. person who came from the year 2000 and wound up in 1631, you have to pick one from the grid, which is a list of all of the people who went back. You don't get to invent your own characters. We do not have any ninjas. We do not have any computer experts. Nobody was driving through Mennington, West Virginia that day because you can't do that by accident. <laughs> it's a very small town tucked into a little valley. Backwater. Back 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 in the haulers. It's backwater was invented for this. Right. <laughs> it's a place that you have to want to go, so you don't get there by accident. And the place to find that grid is on 1632.org. Very dot important org. place to go. Talks about download it what there. not to write. Also, if you just read the comments in the 1632 conferences on Bain's Bar, it will tell you a lot about what to do. Now, we have two other ways to get published, all which will pay five cents a word. One of those is to submit science fiction or fantasy, fantasy stories to the universe <laughs> conferences on Bain's Bar, because we do buy introductory stories, new author stories, from the 16, uh, I'm sorry, the Universe Slush area, <coughs> where people will, it's a writing group, just like the 1632 ones, where people will help you make it into commercial fiction. Sam Hidaka um, is the editor. Is the editor and Sam posted something very, in, very useful this morning. Basically said the difference between um, the Universe writing group and a, a writing group like Critters is that Critters teaches you to be the best writer you can be and Sam and the rest of us teach you how to write professionally and sell. Yeah, and that's the difference. And because we're not writing just for the love, we would like to be paid. Also, writing for the Gazette qualifies you for set what you're being paid professional rates in a professional venue, in a professional venue free sales you qualify for Sepal if you're interested in joining Sepal. Mm -hmm. All right, so Universe is for science fiction and fantasy. And we just opened, Eric decided yesterday that we can open up his Time Spike Universe uh, for stories. Submit them in 1632 slush, and we will go mm -hmm. from there. But you do, hey, at least this way, you only have to read one book instead of five million words. <laughs> There's a search engine on 1632.org that will search those words in print to say, so I wanted to write an article on chocolate. I wanted to know who else had written anything about chocolate. I went to the search engine. I put in chocolate. It brings up the passages where that's mentioned. There weren't very many when I wrote my article. There were five. There are more now. There are more um, now. I but wrote. Should we, if you were posting the story that way, I would suggest if it's not suggested already that you put like time spike time colon spike. and yeah. then the title. Mm -hmm. Right. Time spike colon the 
the title of your story, and then we will nitpick it and perhaps select it for the new Time Spike department in the Grantville Gazette magazine. The other thing um, <laughs> is that uh, the Gazette not only publishes fiction, but also publishes nonfiction and pays the same rates. Uh, so if you want to write like uh, my, my Karen chocolate. did uh, an article on the on how long it'll take for chocolate to reappear. Um, in a manner that we can recognize, uh, you can you can write nonfiction for the Gazette as well. Okay, back to time spike temporarily. This is the biggest rule: you have to write in the Cretaceous area of time spike. You cannot write uptime current stuff. That is up to Eric when he gets around to to doing that. But but anybody who went from the year two thousand four, two thousand five, whichever it was. Back to the Cretaceous, who, you can do prisoners from the prison, you can do guards, you can do nurses, you can do the odd Spaniards that were sucked up by the time spike and are like, what are they, 17th century, 15th century Spaniards? The Soto? 16th century. 16th yeah. century. Earlier. Spaniards. 1500s. And 1500s. there's some Cherokees that got picked up from the Trail of Tears and transported back to the Cretaceous era. And there are all the mound builders that were already there. So there's a lot of scope for stories in that area. And dinosaurs. And dinosaurs. Let's see if I've done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> You're not writing a Bob the Dinosaur story. It's not happening. No, no, no. You're going to get bopped. I can see Paula right now. <laughs> all right. Any questions from those of you who have not already written? Ten of our authors are in this room. So. <laughs> Any questions? Specifics? Anything you need to know? It's really a very easy thing. You just have to know the universe. Yes, sir? I have an interest in the Dutch uh, in the New World. Okay. <laughs> um, I have noticed that the Dutch got the shaft uh, because the French took over. At least that's my you, take on the books that I've read so far. Did You, you weren't here for snarking the plot? Well, I was here. And that's what I'm getting to, is apparently there's going to be some new uh, developments with the Dutch. Are you talking about what you want to read or what you want to write? I'm talking about what I want to write. Uh, I think the Dutch are, you know, they had already mostly lost out in North America. They, they And South America. Wait, 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 wait. Not the Caribbean. Wait. I, I think if I, if I was listening to Eric correct, he said that the Dutch aren't going to make an impact. Well, yes. In North America. And we I met. Think if you, and, I, and I think if you keep the story small enough, and by that I mean away from major developments that would you know, influence the overall art barracks and stories, then it would probably have a publication chance. Okay, here's just what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, Wolford Garrett's a Van has spent numerous years managing other Dutch uh, concerns. concerns in. Um, in 1636, he went back to Holland and sailed with his three sons to take up their own lands there. Um, now, it seems to me that kind of uh, ambition could be thwarted uh, by the events of the French taking over uh, in the New World until this resurgence of the uh, new Dutch influence. And I'm thinking that he might have an act to play in that. Uh, Something if, if, if I'm going to let Fur address okay, that. He's been writing in that area. Okay, Eric and I discussed this at length here on Thursday night. Um, I've got the Northwest Passage stories. Which are Dutch. Which are which are Danish? Danish in the new, the the new Hudson's Bay Company. You've got the Dutch in New Amsterdam, and you've got the French that were down. You have in Danes? I didn't know you had Danes. Yeah, yes, I have Danes. And the French that were down in the Carolinas. We're putting the Dutch and the French on hold right now. That that may they may do something with those stories in the future, or they may be overcome by events and other books. Walter Hunt is working on one. The drums along the Mohawk, which may have some very uh, big impacts in that area. Uh, 
we're going to be doing Northwest Passage, basically the Hudson's Bay area, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, the north. North. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure right now in New Amsterdam area really what is available there, just because of the I call the high politics that could come out of Walter's story. However, there is another opportunity to write about the Dutch. The, we haven't touched the Batavia colony at all. And uh, while Ivor has appropriated uh, Abel Johnson Tasman, um, we, we, we can probably give him back. Um, but the fact is that Van Diemen's Land uh, is in the book. He's, you know, every, the encyclopedias show you where Von Diemen's Land is, uh, they show you where Australia is, they show you where New Zealand is, and there's no reason in the world why the Dutch couldn't do pretty much what they started to do uh, before they started, before the English started creaming them. Um, so if you want to write Dutch stories, there's fertile field, open ground, nobody else is doing it. In the South Seas. In the South Seas. I regret to report that in my conversations with Eric yesterday evening, he is planning on having Australia taken over by the Chinese. Chinese. Yes, this is what That's we okay. Were. That's a conflict. A actually, we were That's talking a good about it, an ex uh, expansion by Zheng Jilong, mm -hmm. who was a very interesting Chinese character in the period about I would call him a pirate he was. Yes he was. Pirate turned admiral turned being supporter turned defector to the mm -hmm. Manchu, etc etc. You get the idea. Um, the but there is we we have been <laughs> discussing doing collaborating on a novel with the Chinese a group of the Chinese getting involved in Southeast Asia and Australia and we really have not mapped it out. I gave him some references to read first, so that area is up in the air, but it's it up doesn't in preclude. the air. It all depends on your time frame, because certainly nothing there is going to happen before 1636, 1637. Seven. So if you're setting a story there in 1634 or 1635, yeah. you're fine. It just don't get into high politics, which actually works as a pretty good mantra for first time and even second time writers mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. Don't get into high politics. Right. Don't want found a colony. Opera. Don't destroy a colony. Don't do something don't that's wipe out involving a mm -hmm. high yeah. nobility, no or high military leaders, yeah. etc. Yeah. There's don't plenty of room for, for stories yeah. without Pretty doing much. that. You've you know, never one, met one Mike Stearns, just don't even. <laughs> You've got one for the In other words, don't get sentimentally attached to your characters either, because right. Eric may kill them off in the next book. Or adopt them for his, and then you don't get to write it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you have one other option. There's the Dutch East India Colony. In, now, in all sorts of places. In all sorts of places. And in spite of the Battle of Ostend, there are a lot of Dutch ships en route and coming back from the Indies. And from the East Indies. From the East Indies, of India. And there's big money there. That, that was one of the...